all year long when I was working on the rewrite I, and I was in touch with Michael Boyd, he, he was saying to me, I, I think this is a really good time for the play. I think it's very timely. And I sort of thought, well, that's you know, the kind of thing that a director tells himself uh, to justify the choice to get into this huge you know, undertaking. When we sat down for the first day of rehearsal here, after the uh, coming right from New York and the uh, enormously peculiar year that we've had in the United States, but I think there are echoes of this all over the planet, the word revolution is being thrown about like confetti um, and, and fought over and argued over and debated over and to a lesser extent because of Bernie Sanders' campaign, the word socialism, but very much the question of whether or not um, fundamental revolutionary transformation or incremental evolutionary transformation is the order of the day um, has become, I think, one uh, map by which one could navigate one's way through our current political situation, geopolitical situation. There's a profound loss of faith on both the left and the right in government. In some cases, there's a shared anarchism that's a profound lack of faith in the idea of government itself. That's always been more or less true. But for most people, even people that believe in the rule of law, uh, there's an assumption, uh, what you hear in the United States over and over again from the people on the left who supported Sanders is that the system is broken. And that's actually echoed by the Trump people. Uh, there are people like me who really don't believe the system is broken, that the system, like any system, uh, is going to work as well or as badly and for as good or malevolent purposes as the people operating the machinery. But the machinery itself, it seems to me, although it's in need of some improvement, uh, is not fundamentally flawed. I believe in constitutional democracy. I believe in the Constitution of the United States of America. I believe that actual radical transformation can happen through uh, a combination of political activism, the direct involvement of citizens, and uh, a Congress and a courts system and, and an executive branch that are occupied by people who can respond to progressive uh, uh, demands coming from the street. The play is really um, comes out of my uh, at this point, decades-long struggle with the question of, of where, to, where I locate myself on the spectrum between evolution and revolution, and, and uh, what I believe has happened um, to the concept of revolution and the ways in which it inspires and inflames some of the best things in us and also the ways in which it has come to stand against us and to pervert uh, some of our best impulses. You know, and also the question of, we have lived through a century of um, considerable revolution, in fact, not just a century, but um, going back to the 18th century, you know, three to four hundred years of enormous political upheavals and uh, that have to be called revolutionary, and we have a history now to look at, and what does that history tell us? This is, the play looks at a specific segment of that history, but I think it, it's a good moment to be looking at those chapters in our history of revolution and asking, you know, serious questions about them. One of my favorite lines in the play is when Gus says, what you call progress, I call the prison rebuilding itself. Are we in any danger of that happening in November? I mean, we're, we're always in danger of it. What, what the Bernie people would say is that, that the pilden, uh, prison rebuilding itself is Hillary. <laughs> they would say that you're, you're going to put in someone who is fundamentally no better or worse than a Republican. Uh, um, uh, there's nothing to be expected from either party at this point. Uh, maybe a little more benevolence from the Democrats, a little more malevolence from the Republicans. I think that those people are completely and totally wrong, catastrophically wrong. Politics is always the lesser of two evils at, at its, you know, there, there's always a choice to be made. I don't think Hillary is evil. I think in this case, it's a choice between a very um, skilled, very brilliant, and really fundamentally very good 
a person who will make a terrific president and, and a, an a sociopath, a monster, a con artist, um, a pathological narcissist. It's inconceivable that, he, that this man would be elected. Um, I mean, he might be, but it, it will be a, a apocalyptically bad if he, if he is. Um, but people would say, as Gus is in a sense arguing, that a reformer like Hillary is nothing more than something that looks like change. But, you know, they said it about Obama 10 seconds after he got in office. And you see the struggles of the Labor Party in Britain, the exact same dynamic that's been repeated since the days of Blair. Really no, no improvement over Thatcher, and it's, it's all the same, you know, John Major. It's all the same thing, and it's just, you know, the selling out of labor. And there's, as in any, you know, political struggle, there's truth in it. Hillary getting elected will not solve all of our problems. The expectation that revolution solves all of our problems is, I think, a fundamental misunderstanding of the idea of revolution, which, as Empty tries to explain in the play, is a belief in process rather than in results.